Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 11 of the Lico Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, drop me in Discord. Let me know what you think about today's prom. Um, yeah, let me see if it loads first. Okay. Uh, yeah, hope you like the intro. Uh, I am still clearly just playing around with the uh, camera, uh, with my 360 camera, and, and uh, hopefully, you know, maybe not the next time. I was going to say the next time, but maybe hof hopefully soon. Uh, you'll see some uh, good footage from somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, still resting. Maybe I'm, maybe at this point I'm not resting. I'm just being lazy. But I think that's okay. Just taking a little bit of time off. I think tomorrow I'll I'll, I'll, one, I'll, I'll do a little couple of miles. So today's very cold, so I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, maybe tomorrow's cold too. But uh, but right. You know, for my, I, I just been focused on get, doing some shopping and getting it done. Like uh, when I went on my Botech trip uh, from a couple of months back uh, in um, in Lithuania and all those areas, I was just too cold. Um, so I'm, uh, and well, and I was too cold. Even though I had, I bought layers with me, but what happened was that um, my my fleece was, I guess, too old. So like it didn't insulate enough. Uh, my my waterproof layer was not windproof enough, so uh, in any case, so things that I'm remedying this trip, and hopefully um, I'll have a good time. But that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, that's got my intro. Uh, let, let's go take a look at today's prom. We have four seventy four ones and zeros. Okay, uh, which one is this? Give them binary string. The strings and two integer m and n. We turn the size of the largest subset of strings such that there are most m zeros and n ones in the subset. Uh, okay, I think the first. Um, okay, so you, so basically they're saying that you're given a lot of strings. You want to choose the most components out of here subset of them such that there are fewer than m zeros and n ones um i would take the first anytime you see things about subset the first thing i do is look at the constraint i didn't look at it yet because i wanted to say that um and the reason is because uh huh this is actually not what i would have expected and uh, just um the reason is just that um when you see subset, you you want to make sure that you're not answering an NP hard problem or something by accident. Uh, and sometimes uh, NP hard, where maybe there's a, a a space for time trade off with respect to dynamic programming, but still NP hard or something, right? Or something similar, pseudo polynomial, if you want to call it other things like that. Um, and when I see subset, I just want to make sure that it's not one of those things. And given that there are six hundred items, n is equal to six hundred. Well, not this n. Um, then, you know, maybe, uh, maybe that should be fine. I mean, I'm going to just, you know, uh, remember these input, these parameters, do what is more, most intuitive to you. So I'm going to call this C, C, C1 and C1. Just count zero and count one, right? Because, um, um, right? Um, because, I don't know, M and N, who, who knows, who cares, right? Um, yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah. All right, well, 600 is a little bit, definitely bigger than I expected, but, you know, there are some constraints that we can play around with. And, of course, I think the first thing that... The first thing that we can do is that, you know, the actual strings don't matter, right? It's just about the number of zeros and ones. So that is, of course, the first thing that we do, right? I just want to make sure that I didn't mis misread it because I felt like I've been misreading a lot of things lately. Um, so, okay. So, yeah. Um, so that's the first thing that we can do. Right? <clears throat> I'm just thinking real quick, I, I don't, I mean, maybe I should, know. I mean, for a medium problem, maybe I should be able to solve this faster, but I actually do not know the answer right off my head. Uh, but my first instinct might be to do something with greedy on M and then um, DP on, uh, D, you know, either greedy on, well, I mean, 
without loss of generality, um, they're, they're the same, right? Like the zeros and ones, you could flip them or whatever. So what I was going to say is that maybe you could do greedy on one and then um, DP on the other or something like that, like in a in a two-dimensional kind of thing. But, um, but yeah, uh, but first, hmm. I mean, yeah. So maybe, uh, maybe you know, uh, the first thing I want to do is just pause it. It might not be the final way I want to do it, but um, but we'll just see for now, right? Uh, S dot count of zero, right? So zero is equal to this, and then one is equal to uh, length of S minus Z, and then just do 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 do, right? So something like this to pause it. But then now I have to think, right? Um, I think my first idea would be actually the greedy on the size of the um, the string, right? But but that's why I'm thinking a little bit because honestly, not gonna lie, greedy is one of my weakest subject because I have to proof. And in my mind, I'm already thinking of how to try to prove this. I, if not necessary to you at home, at least to myself, I'll be like, okay, I, I could be convinced, you know. Um, I feel like I could be convinced, but I, I don't know how to quite articulate it that well. Um, I think the, the idea that you may do that is just because... No, I don't think so. Maybe that's not quite right. No, maybe it, eh. it feels like there's a thing to it, but I, like it feels like there is some good reason about sorting it by by um by the total size, and then do the smallest first in a greedy way. But that feels like there is like some, it almost feels like a constrained solver type thing, right? Um, well, actually, okay, maybe I am dumb. Okay, I see, I see. I am dumb. Um, I, I forgot to, I mean, I, I, like I, <laughs> I feel a little dumber now because that was like one of the first thing that I said was that, um, the first thing that I said was that, okay, anytime you see a subset, remember, I was like, oh, make sure it's not, um, I said, oh man, now I feel so embarrassed a little bit, but uh, you know, but th this th that's why these things are hard, but also why sometimes it's just not greedy, right? And that's why greedy problems are hard, even though I thought it may be greedy, but now that I, I, I kind of, uh, I messed up. And what I, what I mean to say is that the first thing I said was that, okay, anybody is at any time you see subset, um, it feels like, and not just subset, but subset where you have to like count you have to like sum up components in some way, right? In more than one dimension. Um, it feels very NP hard-ish or maybe NP complete. I always, dip, I mean, dip, depending on the problem, obviously one is, uh, uh, one, some, some problems are one and some problems are the other. Uh, and they're not really, well, I mean, they're not mutually exclusive anyway. But yeah. Uh, and then I was like, oh, wait, but given that N is 600, then maybe we should be okay, right? Um, like, oh, maybe there is a non- you know, NPE solution. And I even talked about DP a little bit and I kind of missed all that. I don't know. Maybe today I'm just, I'm going to blame it on the code. Uh, but but then I, I thought about it again and I, I remember that it was length for 100 and then that's when you can just do DP on the number of zeros and the number of ones, which means that what I said earlier is true, which is that everything is going to be uh, NP uh, or the naive way of doing it is going to be NP, but we do have a DP pseudo polynomial solution for it. Pseudo, -polyno pseudo polynomial because that just depends on the length of the string, which I guess maybe doesn't make it. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe that doesn't make it pseudo polynomial. It's just, it's just quadratic then, right? No, mm, no, no, it's pseudo polynomial because M and N technically is not bounded by this. Um, so yeah, yeah, so maybe that is pseudo polynomial. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is pseudo polynomial. Um, so I said all that, and then I just kind of be like, oh, no, maybe it's greedy for like five minutes. Uh, so, yeah, okay. But, 
All right. So, I mean, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, then now it is just a very basic techno tech. Um, I'm not going to go over the principles of dynamic programming for today for this problem. Um, yeah, I, I, I have a lot of mini errands, not even errands, just like cleaning in my apartment type things I have to do. So, uh, yeah, that's just, that's just, um, let's just stick to that for a little bit. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the idea here is that you, you just DP on the number of zeros and you have the number of ones and then just take no tick, right? So then you may have something like this, um, and And, you know, and this is a little bit, uh, uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, the way I, I knew that the way that I write this, right, it's going to be, this is 600, this is 100, this is 100, which means that this is going to be 6 million. If you just look at the number of states, right, um, there's 6 million states. Of course, I know that it's going to be a techno tech, so it's going to be over one each. So it'll be 6 million, but it's still like kind of tight. Uh, I think ideally you would want to convert this to bottoms up, but for now I just feel like it's a little bit cleaner, right? So basically, for each one we just do take no tech, right? Do um, we um, put uh, a way of index in the subset, right? So this is tech, no tech, and if we tech, um, well. I guess we, we have to make sure that um, of zero, if this is less than or equal to two, and duh, 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 right, once it's less than or equal to one, then, um, then yeah, well, the best, uh, I guess zero is fine. So then best is you go to max, best f of the next one, Left zero minus, um, if I could type it correctly. Oops, if I could type it correctly. <laughs> uh, uh, right? Uh, and then otherwise, it's just no tick, right? No tick looks like this. We just don't change anything because we don't take the number in a subset. And then that's it. And that's pretty much, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe you can. Or you can also early terminate if left of zero and left of one is greater than zero, or is zero or something like that. But uh, yeah, I forgot to add a plus one on the tick. <laughs> uh, very sloppy today. Uh, looks okay. I mean, I'm gonna submit. I, this should be correct. It's just whether we time out. Um, and we time out, we'll do stuff about it. But it's fine, right? Uh, but yeah, really, uh, it's kind of funny because I, I had the right intuition, but for some reason, I, I don't know, some days, I guess sometimes your experience carries you, but not far enough, so it is what it is. Um, yeah, um, and this is basically knapsack, uh, two-dimensional knapsack with, um, uh, what you might call it, with pseudo-polynomial, right? It's going to be, say, n times L1 or L0, times L2 or L1, um, and this is all one inside, so that's just gonna be complexity. It's gonna be 600 times 100 times 100, which apparently it is actually reasonably fast, but you know you can't guarantee it. What did I do last time? I probably didn't, uh, I mean, I did the same thing last time, pretty much. Uh, I did the caching more manually. Uh, if you are curious about like the DP explanation, I think in the past I explained it a little bit more. I don't know. That, this is before the Maladon training, so maybe I'm just a little bit lazy these days. But yeah, do look it up. Uh, do do check it out and let me know what you think. Um, but yeah, but today for this one, that's all I'm going to have. Uh, thanks for watching. And that's it. Yeah, stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.